This is a wrap-up video for Bob Carlson's computer. Bob brought his computer to me. He's local here in Fresno with the explanation that it wouldn't start up after he had shut it down around Christmas time and was going to be away out of town. And it was prompting him to re install updates and restart or install updates and shut down. His recollection is that he chose install updates and shut down. He didn't want to restart it because he was ready to leave town and didn't realize that it was waiting to finish installing updates. So he shut it down, came back some number of days later, I think a week or so later, and tried turning it on on January 1st, and it wouldn't turn on. It uh, gave a message about trying to repair the, the hard drive and had some other messages, went into automatic recovery and went into advanced options. He had tried a few things himself and nothing was successful. He brought the computer to me during a live stream one Saturday. Myself and the people involved in the chat room, we tried several things to breathe a life back into it and, and failed. The failure in my estimation, at having gone through some more uh, experiences with this computer, is that the registry files is actually where the damage had occurred. We were unable to do a system restore because during some circumstances, and I don't quite have a handle on when it happens, Microsoft by default has disabled system restore. So there was no uh, registry files that we could restore from. Also, the registry backup that used to be automatically part of task scheduler has also been disabled. So unless you manually re-enable those, which I do for my client computers when I'm setting up a new computer for a client, I'll uh, enable both system restore and registry backup. Now, when I'm setting up new computers for my clients, it's strange. Sometimes it's on already and sometimes it's not. So I don't know what the circumstances are. If you've experienced that you go in to check on System Restore and it is enabled or it is deactivated, that doesn't mean it is always that, that that's always the case for everybody. So I've had some people respond saying, oh, System Restore is off by default for such and such computers. You can't assume that based upon your experience because we don't know who's changing that uh, over the course of any one particular model computer. Now, where I'm at now is I wound up doing a fresh install of Windows 10 on a new SSD drive. Bob has decided to uh, purchase that, so he's going to get the new SSD drive. And then I ran some tests on his old drive, and it tests perfectly. So it was just the Windows installation on it was damaged. Now, here's another thing that I did is I re using his original drive, which still had his original image, I did a backup of the registry files from the new Windows 10 installation on the SSD. And I restored those into the folder that contains the registry files on his original drive, restarted the computer, and it successfully booted up to Windows. Now, his user profile was not successful because the user profile can created on the SSD drive has a different GUID identification for the user account. So it's not the same. Now, I could perhaps even use Dad's Auto Backup to pat, patch it together, but that's just way too much work than justified. So because his old drive is still functional, we've now... Uh, with my conversations with Bob, I've set it up as a backup drive. So his old spinning hard drive is going to um, store backups. I've got Macrim Reflect Free Edition installed on the new Windows 10 installation on the SSD, and it's scheduled to do an automatic full backup every morning at 2 a.m. I know there's other ways to you could do a full backup and then differentials and so on. But we've, we're doing a full backup. So that way, if we ever need to recover the C drive, it's just one file to grab. And it's the most recent. And I have used that many times for client computers. 
what else should I tell you about this? Um, oh, yes, I know what. Um, the SSD drive, let's go back to the, this camera. It needs to be secured in here, right? A, the drive could be connected to the cables and, and even not secured it in any way whatsoever, or maybe just secure it by, with, with putting screws through some hole in the frame. But the more correct way to do it, the more professional way to do it, would be to use a uh, carriage for the drive. Let's see, I guess maybe if I turn this light off, yeah, you get a better view of it. This one came with two um, cartridges or carriages, and I've already used the other one for another client. This is another kind that I have. This one allows for mounting two drives into that carriage. So I'll be mounting this drive into this carriage, and here's the way it comes. It comes, of course, in a little wrapper. Got some Velcro strips with it, and you just screw the SSD into this carriage and then put it into the computer. A little different type of screw for these carriages. It uses these, these round heads. And the HP computers actually use a lot of these round head Torx screws. The screws holding the motherboard are, this, are very similar screws. I don't think they're quite exactly the same. Also, the screws commonly, yes, yeah, on the power supply at the back is the same screw right here. So I wanted to get the same screws. Now, it's not necessary. I could use any screw that will fit in the, in the hole. But I went to a HP computer that I have upstairs that's waiting for recycling. I have a few of them, actually. And just took a few of the screws out of there so I can use those. These uh, adapter, mounting adapters, for the two and a half inch drive, they also come with a bag of screws. This model, they, you have to mount the drive through the holes on the bottom of the drive, whereas this other two and a half inch drive adapter that I showed and has these risers where you can screw into the side holes. Then I'll use the Torx driver. With the SSD, put it into the adapter. I can just slide the adapter in the slot, pull this clip back. There's a little indentation on this where it grips onto that first screw, so that's not going anywhere. And connect the cables. I'm going to get a shorter signal cable for this. Here's a more appropriate size cable. For the SATA signal cable. Take out this long one. I want to have the new SSD connected to SATA port 0, and then the backup drive I'll have on SATA 1. DVD drive is currently connected to SATA 2, and SATA 3 is unoccupied. Well, that sounds good. So I'm going to move this one from the SATA 0 port to the SATA 1, since that cable is already 
routed to go to the drive that we're treating as the backup drive. Put that signal cable in, and here's a conveniently located power for that drive. Clip this zip tie off. Here's that adapter. I'm just going to keep it. No point in leaving that in the computer. That power. And then this additional cable that I got for the SATA signal cable connected to the SATA zero port. Route the other end through here. I don't worry too much about cable management inside brand name computers. The only thing here is I guess there's a potential that this wire could come into contact with the fan, but Now we'll turn it back on and make sure it still works. Switch over here to my capture device. Here's the HP logo. Press the enter key. It prompts for his PIN number. I've already put in the password that he wants and activated the PIN number. So Bob's getting a computer back that has System Restore active, that has Registry backups active, and has nightly full image backups of his drive. So that's a very healthy protection against this type of problem in the future. And I do those items for my client computers when I'm setting up a new computer for a client. That is part of my checklist these days. This work um, that I did for Bob was free. He is going to pay for the SSD drive. I do this work for free when it involves me being able to create in what I think is going to be interesting video content for YouTube. I do provide free assistance, free computer support to people, usually over the internet, remotely, meaning you come into a Zoom session with me, I connect remotely to your computer. I record our work so that I can publish it later, or we can do the same thing during a live stream. I typically live stream on Saturday mornings, 11 a.m. Pacific time. If you would like to ask for help for any computer-related issues, you can send an email to me, dougbetts at livewindowstraining.com. Give me an idea what you want help with. You don't have to go into a lot of detail, and we'll put it together. So thank you. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.